Good morning, everyone, and it is an absolute thrill to see all of you here today. So, first, thank you very, very much for coming, and those of you online, thank you very much for uh, being here today to uh, participate in this uh, welcome. Hi everyone, it's Dr. Steph, and I'm doing a bit of a different video from my usual lectures this time. I'm currently in Boston with my partner for the Harvard Business School Alumni Reunion, and I'm here to attend some lectures, talk to alumni, and get some footage in preparation for my video next week, where I will be interviewing Dr. Ken Bernard, who is an Anishinaabe, Harvard-educated MD, MBA who founded a company that uh, delivers emergency services to Native Reserves. So this is my first time doing a blog, and I hope to answer the questions, uh, what is the value of doing an MBA? What is it like? Uh, where are alumni now? And just to show you what some of the lectures look like at HBS. So I'm currently on my lunch break, and uh, it's quite a beautiful day outside. I'm looking directly out a window. Um, so I'll just show you kind of in a project uh, resource room. And uh, this is the view that I'm looking at directly. And so let's, uh, let's go outside and I'll just uh, walk around. So who goes to Harvard Business School? Perhaps the biggest misconception students have is that doing an MBA is for business and economics majors only. But in speaking to over a hundred alumni at this reunion, you really get a sense of the diverse backgrounds out there, from engineering, computer science, media and fashion, law, and even doctors like me. A lot of the alumni candidly told me that they applied to come here for a career change, either because they wanted to start their own thing or to reset a career path they weren't happy with. Others applied because they worked for a consulting firm or investment bank that would cover their 150 grand tuition if they got in. Interestingly, a few Asian women specifically told me that the value of the MBA gave them credibility in their expertise and the confidence to aim high after seeing their section mates as examples. Finally, some people came here simply because it is Harvard and a top tier school such as this undoubtedly uplifts the trajectory of one's life and the social economic circumstances of your generations afterwards. There are approximately a thousand students accepted to HBS every year and are split into 10 sections from A to J. These are folks that will form your central network over the two years of your MBA. In your first year, there is the required curriculum of mandatory courses in finance, leadership and corporate accountability or strategy, for instance. And in second year, you choose your elective courses based on personal interests. I found it cool how a course called Social Networks was what inspired the creation of a dating app that the majority of my physician colleagues use to find love. While courses with global thought leaders is an attractive reason to go to a prestigious business school, the international network is by far an enormous value add for doing an MBA, and the lifelong friendships is what makes it more worth it than doing an online MBA program. Several startup founders met their co-founders here. Most alumni have a colleague or friend to couch surf with in almost every country because 40% of the class is international. You see different ethnicities, you hear different accents, and as an immigrant myself who thought that having an accent was an impediment in career promotions, that could not be further from the truth. Students have further opportunities to network and find their career interests through over 95 student clubs and I got to talk to some alumni of ASU, the African American Student Union, and the Asian American Alumni Association. So let's hear from what they have to say about their experience at HBS. ASU is the African American Student Union. It's yeah. one of the student groups uh, at Harvard Business School, and it brings together black students from many different origins and backgrounds together for 
programming, fellowship, support. Uh, it was, for me personally, the bedrock of my HBS experience. And what's the difference between ASU and AAA? So HBS AAA is the Harvard Business School Association, uh, or Alumni Association, alumni yeah, association, association for yeah. African American Students. So basically, ASU is the group you're a part of while you're on campus. Yeah. Uh, HBS AAA is the alumni uh, association that brings us all together after we've graduated. Uh, my name is Cindy Montano and I'm on the board of the Asian American Alumni Association. We were founded in 2003 and the purpose of our organization is to foster networking and support among Asian American alumni, not just here across the U.S. but also globally. And right now, um, you know, we have a lot of different programming uh, from social events, networking events, as well as professional events where we have alumni speakers to help other alumni who might be considering sort of more non-traditional career paths mm -hmm. uh, learn about other industries. For me personally, um, I went to Wharton undergrad, so I always knew I was going to, you know, have a career in business. Mm -hmm. And going to Wharton undergrad, I think in some ways, um, is sort of expected that as you kind of progress, you go, you know, you get your MBA, that's kind of like what you do. On the other hand, I also have a lot of um, friends who decided that, and they didn't um, really need the MBA uh, right. to progress in the career, having gone to Wharton for undergrad. For me personally, I can tell you that um, I got a post-MBA job coming out of Wharton. So for me, from a financial standpoint, I know you were asking me about right. that earlier, it didn't make sense. Yeah. Um, in the short term, it did not pay out. I would have been better off continuing to progress in my career with the promotions and the raises. Mm -hmm. um, but the reason I chose to come to business school is I was after what they were selling, yeah. this transformational experience. And I can tell you, I definitely did get that for my two years at HBS. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like at the undergraduate level, um, you learn a lot of the technical skills, right? So it's like your finance classes, accounting classes, marketing, etc. I got my toolkit. Mm -hmm. um, but after working for five years and coming to especially a place like HBS, I really like the case study method, okay. where you're putting yourself in the shoes of these protagonists, oftentimes, you know, heading up, be it like a big corporation or, or a startup, you know, you're thinking about bigger, more strategic issues. Um, and that's what I really enjoyed uh, about my experience here. And, um, and I always said, you know, Wharton gave me the toolkit, but then having worked, HBS kind of allowed me to, to kind of use it um, to really kind of have like the full picture once I, once I graduated. Hello, I'm Peter, uh, MBA class of 2012. Um, I guess the reason that I got an MBA uh, was because I actually was missing a lot of the toolkit um, that um, she, she described. Basically, I came into school not really having done a lot of finance or operations or marketing or entrepreneurship classes, and I knew that I wanted to start my own company. And basically, HBS gave me the network and the ability to do so. So that, that's exactly what I did right after school. I had the support of a lot of professors over here. Some of them still sit on my unofficial advisory board, and they've kind of helped me really grow my firm throughout the 10 years that I've been doing it ever since I graduated. A lot out of my experience here that you can measure, right? Yeah, <laughs> in like dollar, your network, in dollars and cents. The way yes. of thinking. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like all of the friends I made, right? Mm -hmm. Like the amazing friends, um, especially your section mates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've we stayed in touch. I mean, I'm here for my officially 15, unofficially 17 year yeah. reunion, and we're still a really tight knit group. And that's you know, and it's around the world. I mean, that's the kind of friendship and network that I would say like no money can buy. Yeah. And not only that, I feel like I worked really hard <laughs> in college. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it was you know, grades mattered. Uh, versus when I came to HBS, um, I don't know about now, but we didn't have grades, mm -hmm. and it was great. You can just you know learn whatever you wanted to learn and. We had a lot of fun. We worked hard, but we also we traveled a lot. Actually, just last night, I, you know, we were reminiscing with my section mates about all the trips that we took to Morocco, to South Africa, to Aruba. I mean, you know, that's I would say, you know, more than anything, it's I feel like that's the most valuable thing I took away um, is the friendships I made with some just really incredible people that continue to inspire me even till this day. So, where are the alumni now? Many I talk to are in consulting, asset management like hedge funds or private equity. Several have startups in the fintech, edutech, and healthcare space. Some are executives at large film and media corporations, with some others starting fashion brands, managing orchestras, to even someone who bought a bookstore, which we did a case study on. Overall, for me, the most lasting impression I got at this reunion is that HBS teaches you to not settle, that you have one life in which you can create an impact on the world. 
And I think that is what makes institutions and instructors world-renowned, is when they move from teaching to inspiring. Perhaps that is why the last line of Mary Oliver's poem is posted everywhere on campus. Tell me, what else should I have done? Doesn't everything die at last and too soon? Tell me, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? <laughs>